Hi TAC fans. In this video, I'll be showcasing the preference file feature commonly called pref file in ATAC. This is another one of those behind the scenes features that does not get a lot of attention, but comes in very handy when standardizing deployment across an agency. The preference file feature in ATAC lets you save an ATAC configuration of one device and then import that into other devices to keep them identical. ATAC has a ton of options for the way things are laid out. From colors and size of text, to the toolbar layout, to showing units of measurement in imperial or versus metric, the list goes on and on. The beauty of the pref files is being able to quickly configure device for your organization to ensure that user experience across your teams is set to a standard. This can be particularly important for devices that are married to a certain apparatus and shared across teams. In our agency, the ATAC devices are assigned to the engine, truck, or squad, which has a different shift on them every 48 hours. You can imagine the chaos of every time you hopped on ATAC if the configuration have changed. So right now I'm on a brand new device that is a fresh install of ATAC. The only thing I've done is create a TAC server connection and rename the device to D1, as you can see in the lower right hand corner. In the right hand corner, you can see my location is set to MGRS, which is the standard for ATAC at the fresh install. And if I click on my location or call sign, in the right hand corner, it pans back to my location. If I hold and press on my location, nothing happens. You can also note the toolbar is a generic toolbar, which is set on the right. Now I'm going to start altering the device to meet my agency custom needs. For the sake of time, I'm just going to make a few changes to show off this capability. Our agency keeps a spreadsheet of all custom ATAC settings in our current profile. I have a link to share it and I'll put it in the video description. The first thing I'm going to do is set my altitude, speed, and range to Imperial units. Some of these are already set to Imperial units on a fresh install of ATAC, but it's a good practice to ensure everything's set appropriately. So I'm going to go to settings by clicking on the overflow button, or sometimes called the hamburger button, which is located in the upper right hand corner. I'm going to scroll down, click on settings, then click on Display Preferences, then Basic Display Settings, then Unit Display Format Preferences. I'll go to my altitude units, ensure they're in feet, my speed units, ensure, ensure it's at miles per hour, and then my range units, I'll switch from meters, kilometers, or metric to imperial at feet and miles. Now I'm going to back out of here and get back to the main map. The next thing I'll be customizing is the toolbar. I'm going to move it from the right to the left. Go back to settings. Go back to my display preferences. Let's scroll down to toolbar customization. and move it from right to left. Now you can see the toolbar has moved from the right to the left. The next thing we'll customize is the behavior of the self-coordinate box in the right-hand corner. Right now it shows my coordinates as MGRS. And if I move the map and tap on it, it pans back to my location. If I hold and press, nothing happens. So now let's go back to the settings and adjust that behavior. Overflow menu, I'm going to go to settings. And I'm going to scroll down to Control Preferences and to scroll down to Additional Self-Coordinate Controls. I'm going to click on Tap Coordinate Action. And there I'm going to change it from right now, it's set to Pan to Self, which we just showed, to Change Coordinates. And now for every press, it will change the coordinates. The other thing I'm going to enable is Enable Enlarging the Coordinate Display. Now, if I press the long press on the coordinate box, it makes it a little bit bigger font, easier to read. Now let's scroll back to the map and we can see this. If I hold down, it makes it larger. And then each press, it moves through the different coordinate options. The next customization I'm gonna make is to the toolbar. I'm gonna click the overflow menu and you can see that it shows all these tools in a grid fashion. First thing I'm going to do is make it into a list. The next thing I'm going to show you is how toolbars are set up in ATAC. I hit the gear marker 
and it shows that I have a default toolbar. I want to hit the plus button and now create a new toolbar. I want to name it My Toolbar. That's done. And now I can create a custom, custom toolbar by dragging um, all the tools where I want them. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of this plus and minus as I can use my fingers to zoom in and out. And it just takes up real estate on the map. And I'm going to move the Bloodhound tool up to here. I'm going to add data package, the drawing tools, import, maps, and last settings. I'm going to hit save. Now, if I want to go back to the default toolbar, I can hit settings, hit default, and then switch to my toolbar. Now that I've got ATAC configured the way I want, it's time to save the pref file. I need to get into the settings to do this. Now that I've got settings in my toolbar, I can just hit the settings icon. I'm going to go into my call sign and device preferences, and then scroll down to preference management, and then save preferences. Now I can save this preference. I call it D1 pref and hit OK. Now this preference is saved into the ATAC file structure. Now that I've saved the pref file, it's time to share it. There are many ways I could share this profile. I can email it, I could put it on a Google Drive, or I could post it to a tax server via a data package. What we'll do now is put it in a data package and post it to a tax server. So I'm going to click on my data package icon, I'm going to hit plus, and I'm going to use file select. I'm going to browse down to my ATAC folder, go to config, go to my prefs, and you can see I have that D1 pref file there. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to hit new. And we'll call this the D1 pref data package, DP. We'll hit build, and it built the data package. Now I'm going to send this to server and post it to the TAC server. Now other devices can go to that TAC server and download that pref file. Let's go ahead and do that now. All right, now I'm on a separate device. This is a fresh install of ATAC. One thing I've done is, again, connect to the TAC server and rename the call sign. You can see in the down in the right-hand corner, the call sign is D2. It's set to MGRS. If I tap on the coordinate box, it pans back. If I hold down, nothing happens. All right, so now I'm going to import that preference file from a data package on the server. So I'm going to go to data package. And download arrow, I'm going to hit the tax server, and there is that D1 pref data package that we posted. I'm going to click on that, and it's going to download. And now you can see that it was added, and my toolbar moved to the left. Now you can see that I still have the plus and minus sign for zooming in and out. That's because I have to set the toolbar. ATAC will always have the, the default toolbar there. So I'm going to hit the overflow menu. I'm going to hit the uh, gear icon and then change to my toolbar. And now you can see that it set those preferences. See if I hold down on my coordinate box, it makes it larger. And so it brought in all of those settings from that preference file. I hope this video was helpful in explaining the utility of the ATAC preference file and how it can make standardizing the layout across your organization easier. Thanks for watching.